friends welcome to 20 fingers to brains this is part 15 of online shopping cart project so in this part 15 we are going to discuss about how the user places an order with all his details and the entire checkout process how the details customer details are getting saved in the database and how all the product information is also getting saved in the database so let's run our website okay so here we have this website you let me add some products to the shopping cart we have three products let me increase the quantity of one of the products to suppose say three when we three the products and this is increased so let user will enter all the information and will click on place order when user clicks on place order all the information along with this product information will get saved in the database so here the important event is place order event so let's go in the design view in the design view we have this form entire design we have this btn place order when user clicks on btn place order there's an event which is generated here we have btn place order underscore click so this event will take care of saving all the product information and the customer information inside the database so first we get First, we declare products ID equal to string.empty. Then we have a data table DT. Then we check whether the session my cart is null or not. If it is not null, that means there are products in the shopping cart. We are yet to save them. Then we convert this entire session into a data table. And initially, we save all the customer information. After saving the customer information, we save the customer products. So we create a shopping cart object and inside that object we save all the information like customer name email id address phone number products price product list and payment method so we get all this information from the text box on the page so here we have the text box name phone number email id address product total products total price and payment method so we get all this information payment method and we set it in this object then using this object we call a method save customer detail the save customer details will have the method to call the store procedure so initially we set all the values from the object inside the parameters we define seven parameters here we get the customer name email id address product price and payment method all these variables are already declared as a part of shopping cart and they are public variables so these variables are accessible on default.aspx.cs here you can access them so from the text box we are passing the values to the shopping cart and we are calling the method save customer detail we are passing all the variables to the parameters of the store procedure and we finally we are calling the store procedure sp save customer details so let's open the store procedure uh, we have this shopping cart DB. In the shopping cart DB, we have a section programmatically and that contains store procedure. Inside the store procedure, we have to create a new store procedure, save customer detail. I have already created it for you. So let's open it. When you open it, you can see the syntax. Like if you have not, you want to create it, you can create procedure, procedure name, save customer details. This name should be same as the name which you have applied in your code then we specify all the parameters this parameter name should also be same as what you've given in your c sharp code then we simply begin then end try try catch inside that we have written a simple plain insert query the insert query will take all the all those very values from the c sharp code and assign insert those values into the into the customer table so let's understand the design of customer table to create a customer table create table customer details then id name email id phone number address total products total price payment method and order date and time the order date and time will let us know when the order was placed so have this order date and time parameter we are not passing from the c sharp code we are set as a default get date so this get date method if you write this syntax get date it will automatically insert the table insert the record 
for for this field whenever a new record is inserted and here the primary key is id and it is set to identity 1 comma 1 so this line of code will insert the record into the customer detail so whatever the parameter name should be same as we have specified here so the customer name should match with the customer name and the total price should match with the total price and rest all should be the same once this record is inserted we get we should get the latest inserted record so this line of query select at the rate at the rate identity as customer id will get us the latest primary key which is inserted by this query and it will return so when we get this as return so this will return to dt so dt will be returned from this because the return type for say customer detail is data table so we will get the customer id here the customer id is nothing but the transaction number which we are displaying on our screen after that we have a loop and we using this loop we are applying on dt row dot count the dt is nothing but the number of products in the shopping cart so if there are three products in the shopping cart we this loop will this for loop will run three times and it will insert the customer products into customer products table so here we are creating a shopping cart save products and we are saving all the information the customer products customer id that is the transaction number we are getting from dt result dot rows account so that we can have a link like for this customer these are the products that that will has help us identify which customer has placed which order and then we have the product id the product id belongs to this table and the total products then we call a method save customer products the save customer products will have three parameters these parameters are also already declared above as variables and we pass the customer id product id to total products to this newly defined variables parameters for sp save customer products let's open it here we have save customer products this parameters name should be same as this one all these three then we simply insert the records into the customer products table let's understand the design of customer products table it's pretty simple there is no primary key nothing it's a plain table create table customer products customer id product id and the total product so once we save first we save the customer details then we get a customer id then using the customer id we save all the products for that customer then we clear off all the session we don't need any thing in the session because the order is already placed then we get a my cart the my cart will not have anything because it will go in the else part and display uh, hide the unwanted objects here it will show the empty cart first and hide all the other panels once this is done it will show the user with this message your transaction number dt result dot rows and it will show panel order place successfully rest all panels are hidden then it will send an email to the customer email id which the customer has provided at the time of placing the order then up once this email is sent all the details address email id will be turned empty so in our next video we will see how we are sending this email once the email is sent the customer will receive an email like this one i have already taken a screenshot of the email which i have received now hello the customer name we have received your order your order number is 4 to check your order click on the status click on the below link when user clicks on the below link user will be directed to this page and track your order and here the user can enter the transaction number for example 2 and he can see the detail he can see, see the details like customer details products which he have purchased and the delivery status for example for this order number 2 the order received at our end dispatch process started like this whatever the status of that courier is so let's fill all the information and place an order
uh, right now actually we have commented commented this email id code because we want we will discuss this in our next video so let's add the address then select the payment mode then click on place order when user click on place order order place successfully transaction detail are sent at email id provided by you your transaction number is 6 and here's what we get track your order so you can enter the transaction number 6 and check your details name all those information are displayed as it was provided by the customer three products were purchased the delivery status is not yet updated by the admin so when this all these orders are received by the admin of this website so, so let's go in the admin panel in the admin panel we have this customer orders page customer orders page i have just now received an order order number 6 from ms dhoni phone number total products and the total price so the, cust the administrator of this website can view the details as well the same details will be available to him also the only difference between this this view and the view which is viewed by the customer is the is that the admin can add the delivery status like what is the status of this courier or what is the status of this transaction the, the admin can update it so that the user can come to know and whenever the user checks the transaction the user can see what is going on so this was about placing the order in our next video we will see how all the details are sent in email so thank you for watching this video you can subscribe our youtube channel and also if you have any query regarding understanding this video you can put a comment on our facebook page or also on our youtube channel thank you for watching this video have a nice day